Okay, thanks very much. Um, so I'm going to give a kind of uh, status report, um, reflection, look into the future uh, on the scenarios framework. And by that I mean the SSP RCP framework that we all know and love to some degree. Um, and this work is based on a, a, a paper that is in the works at the moment with the same title and has this whole list of authors up here as part of it. So I'm speaking on behalf of this uh, large group. And this includes the steering committee from the Scenarios Forum that uh, we held on this topic um, earlier this year, but also includes other people who are active in the area uh, and, and does have some representation in climate science, also in the impacts area, as well as in the emissions uh, and, and mitigation. And several of the people who are up there are in this room, as you may already be noticing here. Um, so we'll have a full battery of capacity here to respond to, to any questions. Um, so the, the Scenarios Forum is, is one of the motivations and bases for, for this, uh, this work. Not the only one, but, but an important one. This was held in Denver uh, in March, and it brought together about 300 people from uh, around the world who are involved in using or developing, thinking about scenarios, particularly the SSP RCP framework, uh, but, but not only, and got together to discuss how, is, how are things going with using this framework, what's working, what's not working well. We had a wide variety of topics addressed, 30 to 35 different parallel sessions on everything from governance to subnational scenarios of geoengineering to the nitrogen cycle to all, all kinds of <coughs> communicating scenarios, so, so a very wide uh, diversity. Uh, and generally, um, it, it worked very well. We, we have some evidence here. See people interested, uh, paying attention, thinking about the, uh, the, the topic being presented. We had a lively and interesting poster session. And then, just to make sure that everyone would remember this event, we also had a bomb cyclone hit Denver on the third day of the conference. I think this picture was taken just before the blizzard winds ripped those umbrellas out of those people's hands and blew them 50 or 100 meters uh, down, down the road. Um, but everybody survived. Uh, and um, the, the idea at the moment is to do this again maybe not in Denver in March, but uh, to do it again every two years or so. And Iconics, the, the organization uh, under which this um, uh, forum and, and, and hopefully series of forums uh, is, is being organized, is facilitating and identifying uh, who's going to host the next one, where, and, and, and when. Um, but that's not the only motivation for this work. I mean, again, with or without the forum, we are in the parallel process fully into the integration phase of the process, right? Which started with definition of the RCPs, generation of climate model simulations based on them through CMIP, at the same time development of the SSPs. That's all happened, and depending on how you count it, for several years now, a few to many, uh, we've had available information to do this integration in the scientific literature, but also in assessment. Uh, in, in carrying out uh, assessments of that literature to see what we're learning from having this uh, framework available. So it's a good time to be doing this kind of reflection, and this is not the only piece of work that's doing that. I'm aware of several, at least, papers either in the works or submitted or whatever on various dimensions of, of this topic to be thinking about how we're doing and, and where we should be going. Um, so I, I, I thought I would start by reminding us what the main goals of this framework were, then highlight a few of the achievements uh, that seem to be working well, and then highlight a few of the areas for uh, mixed success or needs and, and some recommendations of, of maybe where to go from here. Um, so the original goals for the framework, one, was to have a, a flexible scenarios framework uh, so that it could be used across a wide variety of communities and that it could be extended to, to new topics that are not uh, included in the basic set of information at different scales, sectors, issue areas. 
um, in particular to facilitate work that could integrate climate and societal futures. And that, especially by improving the socioeconomic information in scenarios framework relative to, to what's been available in previous generations of scenarios. Um, to, to foster consideration of uncertainty, right, the prime uh, motivation for scenarios in general, by covering a wide range of climate futures and a wide range of societal futures, uh, and to facilitate assessments, as I, as I mentioned before. So to the degree that this common set of societal and climate information is used across a range of different studies in the literature, that, you know, the theory has gone, uh, should improve our ability to draw synthetic conclusions when it comes time to do assessment. So let's just look at a few of these on, on, on how we're doing uh, in terms of wide use uh, across a range of communities. Um, it seems to be pretty wide. Uh, so in a, a, an assessment of the literature, which is not fully comprehensive, uh, but already there are 650 or more papers applying the framework using at least the SSPs and in many cases both the SSPs and RCPs. Um, here this, this diagram categorizes them kind of broadly into their primary topic of focus, which is a bit subjective, but I think the basic message is correct, that half or more are being applied in the impacts area. Uh, still substantial use in energy emissions mitigation uh, and also in the development of extensions uh, to the, uh, of the framework. Um, and in the impacts area, water, ag, health, big topic areas, also multiple impacts. And this other category includes like quite a wide a variety of, of topics. Um, to say a word about the extensions, these really there are a lot of extensions Qualitatively, so meaning extending the narratives, has been done for many different sectors, topic areas, often in order to help support quantitative work. But that often starts with fleshing out the narratives. This is a partial list of topic areas where that's occurred. Now, I want to give one example, which we may think of as, oh, this is common, I, I, I know about this. But I think it is important to remind ourselves that uh, the energy and land use assumptions in integrated assessment models uh, for implementing the scenarios uh, started with qualitative extensions of the narratives to flesh out how do we make quantitative assumptions about what's happening in the energy system or in land use uh, based on these scenarios. And this has fostered the uh, ability to do lots of different integrated assessment <coughs> that gets talked about at meetings like this. Uh, I'm showing here this is the example from Rogel et al. looking at how many models can feasibility topic, how many models can actually achieve these various combinations of SSPs and RCPs, and you see the red-ish uh, boxes are combinations that turned out to be infeasible in models uh, or, or hard to achieve. And so this has been fostered by having this range of a variety of climate outcomes and societal outcomes uh, to do analyses like that. Another example of other kinds of extensions uh, many quantitative extensions have been made to develop spatial population projections, income, subnational income distributions, infrastructure, and so on, uh, extending the amount and type of information available at an at a increased granularity to do um, additional kinds of, of integrated analysis. One example on income distribution, uh, I think a good example is from the World Bank Shockwaves report that was led by Stefan Holligat uh, and Julie Rosenberg, where they extend the SSPs to generate subnational income distributions using SSP information on demographic change, on educational attainment, on uh, sectoral shifts in, in the economy, uh, and then using that downscaled information to look at how climate impacts may influence uh, poverty, um, and, and doing that by generating two different future societal scenarios, SSP-based, uh, not quite exactly SSPs, but they're based on them, a prosperity and a poverty scenario, two different impact uh, outcomes, a high and a low, and then look at how many people end up being pushed into poverty by climate change. And we see a very large uh, effect of which societal uh, development pathway you're on, in, in addition to whether the climate impacts are, are higher. Um, so, so this framework has helped 
um, enable work on areas that before were really underserved in the, in the quantum community. Um, fostering integration, I mean a kind of high level statistic that helps think about are, are we uh, facilitating bringing climate and societal information together is that about half of those papers use both the SSPs and RCPs. So they, the framework really is being used jointly. Um, I'm going to uh, not go into details because uh, the example I was going to use is the Byers et al. paper that Taiwan mentioned before. I think it's a good example of bringing together a bunch of different societal information, also downscaled spatially, income distribution, uh, jointly with climate change information to look at vulnerabilities um, of the population, both spatially but also not just vulnerabilities or exposure of anyone, but those who are most vulnerable. And in this case, that, that was uh, equated to a level of poverty. Um, and, that, and then looking at how much of both the climate outcome, but also the societal development pathway, matters to how many people were exposed and vulnerable. Looking at uncertainty, are we really using this full uh, framework um, this is the scenario matrix, right? All the RCPs by all the SSPs. And the colors of these boxes indicate how many studies have applied a particular SSP RCP combination. So the dark ones have, those, those combinations have been used a lot. The light ones, not so much. And you see a few things here. One is that most of the area is blue to some degree. So we're using the full framework. So that's good. Um, if we look on the RCP uh, side, the rows, you see, as you would probably guess, the CMIP-5 RCPs being used a lot more because we have climate simulations for that. So 8.5, 4.5, 2.6 is used a lot, 6.0 a little bit less. The others, I imagine, will probably start catching up when CMIP-6 is available. On the SSP side, um, they're all being used, SSP-4 a little bit less so, Lots of use of SSP2. So on the one hand, we are using the, the whole framework, but there is still a uh, kind of dominant use of the middle of the road scenario. I do want to call attention to these places with the orange background are presumably implausible combinations that get used a lot in the literature. <laughs> so RCP 8.5 is being combined with any SSP, even though in principle these are not consistent with each other. Um, Finally, in assessment, the, uh, the framework has been used, and I'll just focus on IPCC for now, uh, across all three of the recent special reports, also in the process of being used in the AR6 working group reports, um, different degrees of use and, uh, and, and success there, I think. I think one particularly successful example, especially as someone who's been involved in the reasons for concern and the burning embers diagrams, is the use in the climate change and land report to evaluate risks in their three key areas here, desertification, land degradation, food insecurity, not only as a function of global average temperature change, which is the vertical dimension here, but also uh, differentiated by higher low vulnerability societal futures, which were based on studies in the literature that used either SSP1 or SSP3, right? So this is exactly the kind of thing that we are trying to foster and it shows to me this is a very strong result, right? The risks, if you pick any of these, food security at two degrees or at three degrees is very different in SSP1 and SSP3. And this is something that we simply have not had a quantification or at least qualification uh, along these lines in the past. Um, so that's great, but there's also a lot of challenges uh, that we're facing and a number of needs. And I won't uh, go through all of these, but let me um, put the summary of topics that we have uh, focused on in the analysis at the moment and then just highlight a few of them. So this includes improving the integration of climate and society. There's more that we can do to facilitate that. Also Im improve the applicability to other scales uh, and to issues beyond the climate change topic. Uh, we've heard some of that in the talks already. The use of the framework in policy research, I think, needs improvement. Uh, and also, there's relevant futures or perspectives on the future that maybe aren't captured in the current framework that maybe should be, and we might think about adding those. We need a plan for keeping these up to date. 
Uh, and then also we should start thinking about the longer term, not just how do we improve uh, this situation in the next couple of years, but are we going to be doing things this way in the scenarios world um, for decades, or should we start thinking about changes down the road? So just to highlight a couple of these, um, on the regional and local scales, this is not something we've mentioned yet, um, so the assessment at the moment is that there's lots of activity, there are lots of extensions to different scales. Um, there is somewhat of a tension, not necessarily a bad tension, uh, but a tension between different <laughs> approaches. Uh, one set of approaches um, kind of pursues uh, consistency across scales so that your local assumptions are consistent with your global ones. Um, others start with the uh, prioritize conditions on the ground uh, in the local area and prioritize those uh, and not so much consistency. And so we have a diverse range of approaches and experiences. I've listed several of them here. Um, strengths and weaknesses to each and not really a good understanding of what methods are available and what those strengths and weaknesses are. So a recommendation at the moment is to, to try to sort that out in the community involved in these regional extensions. This might be some workshops, some review papers, some assessments on developing a coherent set of methods uh, for doing this and understanding more broadly their strengths and weaknesses, maybe converge on some of them, maybe aim for development of a set of sanctioned uh, regional scenarios. Um, going beyond the climate community, um, the issue here is that, as we all know, the SSP RCP framework was explicitly designed to focus on the climate change issue Right, various climate levels, various societal pathways, where societal pathways were framed in terms of challenges to adaptation and mitigation. Um, and there's been some mixed success, I think, as a result in translating that framework to other issues like biodiversity uh, or the sustainable development goals. Um, so there's a number of recommendations here. Thinking about, Kaywan mentioned some of these in his talk. Uh, maybe to extend the narratives right now, the SSP narratives, to be clearer about what is their connection to the SDGs uh, in, in the SSPs already, maybe to develop some new ones that are more specifically aimed at addressing the interaction between the SDGs and climate policies, and more broadly, uh, across these different communities, including the biodiversity community, um, to, to aim to do some things to bring the scenario approaches together so that we don't end up missing the opportunity to draw synthetic conclusions across these different communities, right? We had the biodiversity assessment come out uh, earlier this year. Some overlap with the SSP approach, but has also developed their own set of scenarios. And that can be okay, but we want to make sure we don't lose the opportunity to say, what do climate and biodiversity have to do with each other across these assessment processes. Um, one other that I, I, I think is, is really a, an important one is improving the use of the framework in policy research. Uh, and that's because, of course, the framework was meant to foster research on policy. That's why it was framed in challenges to adaptation and challenges to mitigation, is to do work on those policy responses. Shared policy assumptions were developed as part of the framework in order to foster that. But these so-called SPAs um, were a bit less well-developed and have been less widely applied than other elements of the framework so far, uh, especially on the adaptation side. Um, and that's limited the number of studies that are out there in the literature that apply common policy approaches so that we can draw synthetic conclusions about how well a particular policy works or what it, what's its pluses or minuses. So recommendations. Well, to further elaborate these SPAs, you know, reinvigorate our focus on them, particularly for adaptation, to foster that kind of research. This also raises the fairly tricky but related issue of what are baseline scenarios, and to maybe rethink our approach to baselines. In the current framework, the baseline scenarios that are shared, the community scenarios, are SSPs, right? And they're defined as not having any policy. The scenarios that have policy are in the matrix. They're done later in individual studies to test out a particular policy. Um, and maybe that's not the best way to do it. Maybe we need some scenarios with policy in them that also are shared community scenarios. And uh, there's a, a number of ideas around that. Um, 
So finally, I'll skip to just thinking about the longer term, kind of whatever we're doing in, in the short term to, to address issues, the process in general. I think we should be thinking about keeping participation as wide as possible along a number of dimensions and to think about alternative approaches, at least to start, right? There's work out there that doesn't, not all this kind of work uses a small set of common alternative scenarios across the community. That has served us well for a long time, and maybe we should keep doing it that way, but there are also other approaches with large sets of scenarios, with fully integrated scenarios, not separate societal and climate scenarios, and all of this should be thought about now. So. I will close there and leave the full list up there for your further reflection. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dave.